Hey, and welcome to a video where we're going to be going over a couple examples, uh, looking at a couple pieces of code and trying to find the time complexity or the big O notation of the algorithm. All right. And these are going to be, again, taken from this book, Cracking the Coding Interview. Uh, this is an, a wonderful book. Actually, there's so much content in here. And so I'm going to be taking examples from this book and but uh, trying to help you understand the meaning of why um, this algorithm is a bigger notation with why it's linear, uh, quadratic, constant. It's one thing to, to just kind of guess or just say, oh, this is big O of n squared, but why? Because in an interview, they're, they're not just gonna ask you, oh, what's the time complexity? And you're gonna say it and you're like, okay, good job, then move on. They're, gonna, they're, they're more than likely gonna follow up with another question. Okay, can you explain why why is it time? What's the time complexity of this algorithm, or, or why is, is that the time complexity of this algorithm? All right. So we're gonna go ahead and get into our first example. And uh, if you want to pause the video before each, each example and kind of go through it yourself, and then and then uh, listen to how I explain it, and you know, hopefully it'll help you. All right. Okay. So one of the first things you want to do whenever you look at a piece of code is you want to understand the meaning of the code. That's like the first thing that I would do. Okay. So here we have, um, we know that we, we can see right off the bat, there's two for loops. So the first for loop is going from i equals zero to the length of the array. Now, all we're doing inside of there is we're just doing sum, sum equals sum plus the array of i or that index. And all this means is we're just summing all the values in the array from the beginning to the end of the array. That's it. And we have a second for loop down here that's doing the same thing, except we're the only difference is we're multiplying all those elements. It's the same thing though. So we have one for loop uh, adding all the elements and one for loop multiplying them all. And we're just printing the sum of the product at the end. Okay, so that's the first thing I would do is find the meaning of the code. What are we? What is it actually doing? That kind of gives you some insight to time complexity. All right, kind of a rule of thumb is anytime there's an assignment operator, like anytime you're printing, returning, or have like some assignment operator, operator or you, there's some like mathematical operation, those are constant time. So this is big O of one. These are each big O of one because we're just assigning a variable. No matter whatever we're doing, besides these aren't, I mean, these aren't even a for loop, so it doesn't actually matter what the size of the array is. But or how many times we call this method, no matter what happens, the same. All we're doing is assigning a variable. It's the it takes the same amount of time to do that, no matter what. So that's called constant time or big O of one. All right. Uh, okay, so we got that out of the way. The we have two for loops. So let's get the first one first. We're going from i equals zero to the length of the array. So this means that we have to go through the length of, of the array. Let's call this. So this um, array length, uh, whenever if whatever we say this array size is, so we say it, we say it's ten. So we're going to go from zero to nine because that's gonna be less than ten. So we're gonna go from zero to nine, and we're gonna sum all of those elements, whatever is in, whatever those values are in those indexes. So we're just gonna go from zero to nine, but we have to go through all those elements. If we increase the array size to uh, hundred thousand. We have to go from zero to 100,000, okay? So what this means is no matter, no matter what the size of the array is, we're still, the time, the time it takes to go through that array is gonna be based on whatever the, whatever the size of the array is. So uh, if we have array size of 10, it's gonna take this amount of time to perform that action, right? To go through the whole for loop. If we increase it to 100,000, you know, it's going to be right there with it. So what that means is the time it takes to perform this for loop is proportional to the size of the array. So that means this for loop is big O of n. That means it's linear time. And you might be wondering, well, what about the sum plus equals array of i? Well, that's actually, the math. that's just a mathematical operation. You, you might also be thinking, well, we're doing it uh, n amount of times we're doing it whatever the size of the array is we're, we're going to be adding that amount of times well that's true however 
the actual operation to add is the same no matter what. The, the size of the array doesn't matter whenever we're performing an, a mathematical operation. You know, uh, the, the size of the array can be 1 billion, but each time we add, it takes the same amount of time no matter what. It's not proportional. It doesn't have anything to do with increasing the size of the array. Right? It doesn't have anything to do with it. So that's why that's, uh, that's just why it's big O of 1. Right? And so basically, it doesn't matter. All right. And then we have a second for loop. It's the it's really it's really just the same thing. We don't again we don't care what's going on down here, because it's just the mathematical operation is going to takes the same amount of time to perform no matter what the size of the array is. It doesn't care about the input. It's going to be called that many times, sure, but to actually perform that operation doesn't matter. And with this for loop, um, this is based it's it's based on the size of the array, which we always which um, if you're you know if you just starting out with this, it's always called n, right? We always use the variable n for like the size of the input. So we're going to call this one big O of n. This for loop is big O of n, OK? And then the last thing, we have the system printout. It's, it's actually only being called once and doesn't matter how many times we call this method. It's just printing, which is an operation of 1, OK? That's that. So now what do we do? We have two big O of n's. Um, does that mean it's n squared or just n? What are we doing here? Well, so we're going through the first loop, and then we're going through the second loop, which means that we actually add these. So we're going to we're going to say n plus n, which does equal two n. And we could say what we have two n plus five here, something like that. There's actually more based on uh, based on like incrementing the i and stuff, but that doesn't matter, right? So we just have like uh, 2n, 2n plus 5, we're going to say. Uh, but so what do we do now? Well, one, there's two rules, two rules for time complexity that you need to know. One, drop all the constants. Always drop the constants. And number two is you take the highest order of operation, always. So we could have n to the fourth plus 2n plus 5. Well, then that means we say it's big of n to the fourth because that that is so much bigger than 2n plus 5. That 2n plus 5 wouldn't even matter at that point. So whenever, so by that logic, what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to cross out the 2, we're going to cross out the 5, and this overall, this is big O of n. Sorry for the sloppy, sloppy handwriting. But uh, so this operation to perform void foo, this algorithm, takes big O of n time. All right. All right. On to the second example. So here, uh, first thing, what are we doing? Right, we're printing pairs as the, this one actually has a good method name. We're printing pairs in, and we're taking a single array as the argument. We're iterating, there's two loops here. And actually, these are nested loops, which is different. And we'll see why. Uh, we're saying for int i equals 0, i is less than the array length. And then we're going right into the next loop. And what we're doing is we're printing um, the index or the value of the array index at i and j, uh, which will end up being an ordered pair. Like this is going to say 0, 1, then 0, 2, 0, 3. Yeah, that's kind of bad. All the way down to uh, whatever n minus 1 is, whatever the array this whatever the size of the array is. So it's going to be 0 to n minus 1. And that's the first. And that's just going, we start out the outer loop, and then we're going to the inner loop. And we're going through uh, the array size in uh, the loop with j. All right, and then we're going to go back up uh, to the outer loop. And this is going to be, this is going to, be going to say 1, 0, and then 1, 1. Um, oh, I'm sorry, this is actually going to be 0, 0 first. Sorry. Uh, and then one, two, all the way down to one n minus one. All right. And then, okay. And it's going to do that. You can see the pattern now. These ordered pairs. All right. Uh, so now that we kind of have an understanding of what this is doing, how do we, um, how do we figure out the time complexity of this? Well, we know that this outer loop 
is going big O of n. Just because like the first example, this loop is going um, up until the length of the array. And because of that, this loop is always, the time to perform this loop is always proportional to the length of the array. Okay, so now we have another array down here doing pretty much the same thing. It's going from zero to the length of the array. So it's just like the outer loop. We're gonna say big O of n. Okay, and then we have the system printout here, which we've already said before. Anything simple like this, assignment operators, printing, a math operation is just gonna be big O of one. I'm not even gonna put that here, but this is just, that's big O of one. So we don't even care what that's doing. Um, so, so we, that's the analysis for that. So what does this mean now? You might say, if you're new to this, you might say, well, last time it was big O of n because we had two for loops uh, that, that took uh, linear time. Well, that was true then. However, what's happening here is for each iteration of the outer loop, we're going through the array, the whole array for each iteration. We're not performing, um, we're not going through the loop once and then going through it again. For each iteration of the outer loop, we're going through the whole array with the inner loop. So instead of doing, instead of adding, we're gonna say n times n, which is n squared, which also is worse than big O of n. <laughs> this is quadratic. So um, I want to, I, I almost don't even want to say a rule of thumb, but if you have a nested loop, uh, I almost, a lot of times this is going to be, be mean that it's n squared, but not all the time. All right. And we'll get into another video with another example and where uh, you'll see nested loops don't always mean n squared uh, for time complexity. You kind of just have to think about um, the meaning of the code and understanding what it's doing. And that's really gonna help you figure out the time complexity. Okay, I hope this helped. If you have any questions or comments or maybe need a little bit further understanding of what's going on here, leave them in the comments below and I'll be more than happy uh, to help you. Because understanding, understanding how to come up with the time complexity is far better than just memorizing, just memorizing all the big O notations and somewhat guessing or having just an inkling of an idea. If you can dissect it, it's going to help you so much more in interviews. Okay. I'll see you next time.